Hi everyone, I'm back, uh, not a film this time, but book review, and I'm going to talk about Jen Lyon's The Ruin of Kings, uh, and it's the first volume in a multi-epic fantasy, um, and the overarching series is called A Chorus of Dragons. Now, as you may have known, if you've seen my book reviews, they go all over the place. But one of the things that I absolutely love is fantasy literature. And the problem is, um, I love fantasy literature, um, and most fantasy is not. Um, and I don't mean that in a snobbish way, I just mean that once you've read good fantasy and you can see the heights of where that genre can go, um, you often uh, are disappointed. Now, this is not the case with this work, but it does fall in a very interesting place. And that is that sometimes you read a work, and this is 540 odd pages, and they are ticking a lot of the boxes of what you want in epic fantasy. So the world building, really good. This person, Jen Lyons, uh, I've never read her before. She has done a lot of thinking about this world. She knows how the magic works. She knows how the power structures are, the fauna, the flora, dragons, etc. She has nailed that. And she often uses uh, footnotes as a way to even show greater depth. So I would imagine that in her study, she has like a 12 binders of all the history of this world. Now, the problem is that to tell this story, she uses a very uh, unique structure. And that is, she splits the story in two, and you find this out very early on. In fact, in the first, I don't even know if it's the chapter or if it's a prologue, you find that this is like a testimony of what has occurred. And then the storyline splits, and one is told by one narrator, and one is told by the narrator of the hero, for want of a better word. And the two then tell different storylines set in different time structures. But by doing that, it is fleshing out the world um, because the characters uh, intersect and eventually the two storylines come together. And the problem I found was a, one of the storylines is much more interesting, uh, and that's because it's very hard to tell a story in which one is set in the future tense and one is set in the past tense because you just want to get to the future tense part of the story, generally. And this is what happens here. So it's the story of Kyrin is the protagonist, um, and one of the stories is Talon, who is this person who's experienced some of the history of all these characters in this world. Now, one of the problems I had, and I, this is generally not a criticism uh, that I have, is you'll sometimes talk to people and you go, hey, have you read Lord of the Rings or Game of Thrones or something? And they'll say something like this, which is what my wife said. Um, I struggle with that because I can't keep track of all the names. I can't keep track of all the characters. And I always go, oh, I find that hard to believe because both Lord of the Rings and Game of Thrones is so elegant in its storytelling and the way of defining its characters and the history of the world that often you learn about the history as the story unfolds. That isn't the case here. I did actually have trouble with the characters and I'll tell you why. It seems like a rookie error um, unless she's trying to overthink it and there's something to do with that she's worked out the language and how names are but for instance, these are the these are five main characters in this uh, book, and they are Tereth, Tayena, Tienso, then Kalindra, Kamezra. So, what I found is if you're reading late at night like I am, and those are the names, it is very easy to go, wow, and especially at the beginning, who's who, keep track of all that. Now, as I said, normally I don't have a problem, but this is a big book and lots of the characters are mixing over. And the other thing which happens is because of the characters, a lot of them are sorcerers, they're ancient, some are gods, some have lived before and taken over other bodies. 
and it gets very complicated as to who is the actual being in that body because the body will have a different name but it's actually this character who you met in a previous timeline so by the end of it you get it all straight I'm not saying it's a fatal flaw but definitely it is one of the challenges of this book um, Look, I don't want to say too much more because this is one of those books, when you criticise stuff as a hobby, as I do, films and books and computer games, you often think a lot about uh, the themes of the underlying work and then the execution of it. And then that can be in films like the actors or the cinematography or in books, it'll be the prose and the structure. And this book sits dead in that just quite good like 7 out of 10 I'd recommend it if you're into epic fantasy and you read a lot and you're happy with a lot you will really like this if you have a higher bar you might think it's a little bit clunky but it's definitely not bad and I read a lot of bad stuff which I give up after about 100 pages and I never talk about it here because I don't think how, how does that help anyone um, that's it for Gen Lions A Ruin of Kings and the book I'm going to review next, which I can't wait to talk about, is The Overstory by Richard Powers. I've never read Richard Powers. I know he's got a big reputation. This book was on the, I think, long list for the man booker and might have even been the short list. And uh, it just won uh, about two weeks ago, The Pulitzer Prize 2019 for Best Work of Fiction. I have read, you know, a little bit, and uh, can I just say, this is really good so far, and I can't wait to dive into it next time. So that's it for today. As you know, if you like books, if you like movies, if you like TV, games, pop culture, subscribe, like if you can, because it goes into the algorithm so more people see what I'm doing. I'm on Twitter, at Guru Eden. And I hope to talk to you soon. Bye.